A game of chess where the people are pawns, the players are monsters, a young man wants to become God, and another man simply just wants a puzzle to solve. Today, we're talking Death Note. Out of all the recommendations that I got after my last anime review, I decided to check out Death Note, and boy, I'm really glad that you guys shared it. Now, Death Note, for those of you who haven't seen it before, this is your spoiler warning. There are always spoilers in my videos, but it's an older show, and I'm using this as a way to kind of catch up with all the great things that I've missed, and I hope that you guys like this recommendation series. So, if you guys have anime recommendations, leave them down below, and I will absolutely read those. But, without any further ado, Death Note is the story of Light Yagami. He is a high school student who is basically just good at everything. The girls love him, he is great at school, and he is just highly, highly bored. The man has main character energy out the wazoo, and it's kind of interesting how the mangaka flipped this on its head. In episode one, Light Yagami is given the death note, or he finds it laying on the ground, and because he's so highly bored in his life, he picks this thing up, it tells him exactly how to use the death note, and how the death note will affect people whose names are written in it. Those people get deleted. Anyway, and he thinks for a second, well, this is completely foolish. Why would this happen? But because he is so bored, he decides to give it a shot. After using the Death Note so much, it starts to get international attention, specifically attention by international governments, and they decide that they need to put a stop to this guy who is absolutely just massacring, well, massacring, heart attacking, heart attacking, tons and tons of people out there, all of them who seem to be criminals. They enlist the help of a guy named L. And before I continue this review at all, L. Light, I'm probably gonna say the names wrong. It, I, it just is how it is. And that basically starts the first arc of the story. Now I'm gonna break this down in like the three different arcs. I know they might be called something different in the manga, or maybe I should say the three different acts. And basically the first act is Light finds the book up to memory erasure, memory erasure up to memory return, and memory return to the end of the show. So through the first arc of the story, we're introduced to these two characters, Light and L, and they are basically just going at it intellectually, trying to one-up each other. They both have very different motivations. The motivation of Light is he wants to become the god of the new world. He sees this world, he's bored, he sees how innocent people are being treated by horrible people, the criminals, and wants to get rid of them. That does seem noble, and I think that that's why you get drawn into Light so early on, is Although he wants to be the god of the new world and reshape it in the image that he wants, you see the narcissism there, but then you also go, hey, but he's getting rid of the criminals, so maybe he's good. Then we go over to L. L is just a wickedly brilliant guy, always has been too brilliant for his own good, but he doesn't really care about the dog and pony show that is modern day morality, which basically just leads him to wanting to solve puzzles, and so he becomes the world's greatest detective that nobody knows who he is. He keeps his face hidden, he uses like a voice modulator to his voice. He's always communicating through telecommunication or online communication, and that is where the setup of the show is. You get these two brilliant minds going back and forth at each other, trying to one-up each other, trying to make sure that they come out on top. A few things get thrown into the mix that throw them both off, but how they deal with those situations and how they're able to come out on top of those situations really leads you into just two characters that are hugely compelling and just keep you watching the show. From the start, this show really grabbed me. Usually I have a three episode episode rule. If I don't like it after three episodes, I'm probably not going to like it. Death Note takes you through these two characters and getting them closer and closer and closer until they are working together. One guy trying to hide his true identity, the other guy knowing that that's his identity, and both of them basically lying to each other and everybody around them in order to win the game. That's right, this game that is costing human lives is just a game to them. And it really has nothing to do with the humans that are living or dying. It has everything to do with one-upping each other, which I just thought was... An both of these guys are sociopaths to a certain degree. And I just thought, holy crap, watching this play out is a really interesting take. So as they get closer and closer and closer, obviously the plans and the manipulations are getting to a point where Light makes a radical decision to basically come up with this elaborate plan that he's going to lose his memories 
and then comes up with a plan to keep his memories, <clears throat> and he starts manipulating even the Shinigami, right, the gods of death, that he gets the death notes from. In Act 2, we go from the memory erasure to memory coming back, and this whole act is where I've heard some people kind of fell off, and to be perfectly honest with you, I almost did too, but it was your recommendation, so I stuck it out. I'm really glad I did, by the way. The second act of Death Note basically takes you through Light being just Light. Normal Light, before he was affected by the Death Note, he's just a good guy, he believes in being a good guy, but he is still working with L and still trying to find Kira, right? Light not thinking that he was Kira for a certain amount of time and L absolutely knowing he was, and Light here seems to be more honest, right? He's like, no, I can't be Kira. Why would I don't have any memories of doing any of these things, so on and so forth, but he's working through and going, man, but Kira, this guy, he thinks exactly like I do. And L is sitting here going, what in the world is happening? How, it, this, this is a totally different guy than I was dealing with before. Light was this way before, now he's this way now. What's going on? It was a big monkey wrench in the plan for L to capture Kira, who was Light Yagami. Now, as it goes through, you see this somewhat of an elaborate plan to basically get rid of his memories, come back with the memories. It manipulates the Shinigami. It manipulates other people. It gets people hot off the trail of Light Yagami. And it's really, really interesting after the show ends. Once Light gets the Death Note back, though, he remembers everything. He knows exactly who he is. He remembers all of his goals and continues with these pieces that he laid out. This leads to probably one of the coolest moments in the show and one of the saddest moments of the show, but the death of L. Now, L is absolutely an endearing character to a lot of people, even though he is absolutely manipulating everybody else in the show but we kind of root for L because he's a compelling character. We actually root for both of them, which is interesting that you have two people combating against each other and you're rooting for both of them. Well, L gets to a point and they actually showed something in the anime that they didn't show in the manga, which was the rooftop rain scene. Basically where L realizes that he's lost. He knows that Kira is Light Yagami, but he also knows that Light Yagami had the one thing that L didn't the ability to manipulate the Shinigami. And El realizes that, and you see a shift in his final episode, and it was absolutely stellar the way that the mangaka wrote this out. Light manipulated the Shinigami in such a way that she had to make a choice. Save the person that she cared about, which would give up her own life, by writing down El's true name in her notebook, or let the person that she cares about die. Light knew that this would happen. He knew that this would, one, get the Shinigami off of his ass because she didn't really like him, and two, L would no longer be a factor. After that, we go through a five-year time skip. L has accomplished everything that he has wanted to. He's gotten rid of all of the people that were opposing him. He has proven himself to be the best. Nobody else is standing in his way, save two people that were raised in the primary school or in the orphanage that L came from, and these were supposed to be the two guys that took L's place. Now they both start working to find Kira, they both start working to make sure that they get rid of this guy. One guy is doing it because he simply wants to solve the puzzle, the other guy is doing it because he wants to prove that he's not second fiddle to, you know, you know the guy who is solving the puzzle. N, I believe his name was. I don't know, the white-haired version of L. After they go through this, the plot starts to get thicker, the plans get a little bit more elaborate, the p manipulation of people becomes more elaborate, and it is wildly interesting to see how all of this factors out, and the final episode of the show leads to Light meeting his inevitable end by multiple people, basically sussing out his plan, figuring it out, and being just literally one step ahead of him because Light made one mistake, and his mistake was, he put too much faith in one of his loyal followers, and that guy made a mistake. Overall, Death Note was absolutely brilliant from start to finish. This is one of those stories that I went through and realized, holy crap, the guy who wrote this is highly intelligent. He's a multiple layer thinker, right? He is not a first level thinker or a second level. He is thinking ahead constantly because both of these guys were thinking in multiple phases to try to outdo one another. And it just so happens that the good guys, good guys, won at the end and took out Light Yagami. One of the biggest things after watching this is there was a lot to digest here. And I even went and I watched a YouTube breakdown of the entire series and watched somebody who go through it, who read the manga and also watched the anime because I was like, maybe there's some things that I missed. 
generally in shows that I check out, I don't really feel like I miss a whole lot, but at this one, I was like, all right, I need to, I need to cover my bases here. One of the things that you realize going through that that might have gotten missed in the anime itself is that the manga really just kind of shows you the difference between Light, how he is trying so hard to be the perfect one, and there are other people that just don't really have to try that hard, which kind of breaks through the facade of, of Light and kind of shows his absolute hubris that he has. I mean, obviously he says he is justice and wants to become the god of the new world, and all of that culminates into just great character creation here. One of the most interesting things to me after I had a few days to digest all of this is, wait a minute, I really liked Light in the beginning, but I didn't like him at the end. And I think it's for a little bit of a different reason. In the beginning when Light had the Death Note, he was going after criminals. The people whose faces and names were publicized or the people who he saw on the street that were doing horrible things. And he was erasing those people. It was really interesting to see him go from that to at one point in the show, he goes and basically tells all the newscasters and the world governments, you're not allowed to publicize your criminals anymore. You're not allowed to share their faces. You're not allowed uh, to really share their names. And so people start doing it online. And that's where Kira, his alter ego, gets the names and faces from. He's still doing it. He's doing it unadulterated for a five-year time period. What's really, really interesting here is how I highly disagree with him going through and finding the people who were convicted, finding the people who were in jails, finding the violent crimes that they were doing and the things that they were doing to wrong other people through a system that we have somewhat established today and erasing those people versus going to online forums and just listening to any Tom, Dick, and Harry who has a problem with his next door neighbor. There's a massive issue here. In one version of it, it's like, look, we have a system that's obviously imperfect, and a lot of us would say, why would you capture this person and then release them and send them back out into the open world? Why would the government and the police do this? And I think a lot of people have said that. And then on the other side of it, on the extreme side of it, it's like, oh, I'm just gonna go over to Twitter, or I guess X, I'm just gonna go over to X and just see who people want me to delete and I'm just gonna delete those people. It is a very, very, very different way to handle the crime problem. And it's one of those things that as soon as he started doing that, I went, wait a minute, no, that's not good. Because we see how people online will do anything and everything to ruin someone else. Whereas when we have a system in place of checks and balances to verify criminality and so on and so forth, it seems to work at least a little bit better. We're not criminalizing everybody for everything, but in the online world, on Twitter or Facebook or whatever forum you're on, Reddit, we're gonna criminalize everybody. You don't deserve to live, especially if I can share your name and face to Kira, and he's gonna take care of you. And it goes from a point where Light is directly targeting criminals who could be mostly verified by the system. And I say mostly, because he did go after some innocent people, to being the guy that just goes after whoever's name and face he sees online. Those are two very, very, very different ways to tackle this problem. And honestly, that's where I started to not like light anymore. I was like, wait a minute, dude, you're, you kind of had a system that was working, but now all of a sudden you decide that that system is not good enough. Now you just turned the population on each other when the population of the world was for you. 70% reduction in crime. You know, wars, pretty much all but gone. Terrorism, pretty much all but gone because everybody was afraid that this guy was gonna write their name down. But now all of a sudden, what? You've gotta be afraid to make a tweet? You've gotta be afraid to say that you didn't like somebody. Maybe you just get a little bit angry one day and you kinda of just shove one of your buddies out of the way and now he's like, oh, this guy is violent. It really leads into this thing that no matter how good our intentions might be, even though Light's intentions were to become God, and how good we might start something off, we can always be influenced by other people. And if we turn our decisions into somebody else's hands, it can very, very much turn into a bad place for all of us. Overall, Death Note is an absolutely incredible anime. It makes you think about so many different things and so many things that I can't cover here and so many things that people have probably talked about in the past. I think that Light Yagami was actually doing good at the beginning of it by kind of using the criminal justice system that existed and just kind of being that executioner that he was being versus what he turned to at the end, where it's just anybody who posts on a forum. I think the character of L is absolutely fantastic, and although I thought he was kind of humanizing somewhat by interacting with more people, he never was. He was just a liar the whole time. You know, the, really the only character that I had a problem with was Misa Misa. Can't stand her, don't like characters like her. I understand why she was in the show. I don't like her as a character. Most of the other characters were fine, but just, I understand why characters like that exist, but I have issues with them. 
Although that being said, thank you all so much for checking out my review of Death Note and leave your recommendation for the anime that you think that I should check out next. If you guys have not seen my past reviews, check out my Tokyo Revengers review or possibly check out my Code Geass review. You guys might like what I have to say there, even though I really, really, really have things to say about both of them. And as always, thank you so much for being here. And until next time, cheers, everybody.